In this episode, we take a look at the Rode Wireless Pro, which you are recording with right now. And let's first get you some audio samples that are completely unprocessed. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you're quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Let's run through the features and the pros and cons here. Again, I'm recording with the Wireless Pro, and that is coming in through the Lavalier 2, which is connected to the transmitter. And we'll go ahead and give you the recording that's made on the transmitter itself. So what does this system include and what makes it special? First of all, it includes two transmitters. They're very small. And there is a single dual channel receiver. So you can send two microphones, in essence, to a single receiver. And then usually you run that into a camera. That's what it's really designed for. You could adapt it and maybe run it into an audio recorder if you wanted to do that as well. But that's what it starts with. It also comes with a charging case, which allows you to recharge both transmitters and the receiver two times if you have the battery in the charging case charged up to full. So each battery cycle will power the units for about six hours and 32 minutes in our tests. And it's usually the receiver that runs out first, incidentally. So there's uh, kind of the background as far as powering is concerned. There is also a USB-C port, so you can also power each of the units via that. So if you needed longer powering time, that's an option. The kit also comes with two of the Rode Lavalier Pros, which are kind of their highest end Lavalier microphone. Normally, I think these come in somewhere around $100 each. It's a pretty good Lavalier microphone. That's what you're hearing right now. Of course, it comes with all the accessories. It comes with the alligator clips to attach the lavalier microphone. It comes with the foam covers. It comes with the fur covers. And it also comes with the fur covers for the inbuilt microphone on the transmitter, which you can also, if you don't want to use a separate lavalier microphone, you can just transmit directly from the transmitter or capture the audio with the microphone in the transmitter. And that's going to be for really, if you've got to work really, really quickly and you only have time to clip the receiver onto the person talking, maybe in a news kind of situation. Then of course it comes with all the cables that you need. So first of all, on the receiver, there are two outputs. There's a 3.5 millimeter output. So if you wanna run the audio into a camera that has a microphone input, a 3.5 millimeter microphone input, you would use that. And then it also has a USB port, USB-C, and you can run that out into either a computer or a mobile device, whether that be iOS or Android comes with the cables, both Lightning and USB-C. So regardless of which generation of iOS device you have or whether you have an Android phone, it's got you covered. Now, the other thing that's special about this system is that the transmitters can record at the same time that they're transmitting audio to the receiver. So if it so happens that while you're recording, and this is possible, actually somewhat likely outdoors if you get far enough between the transmitter and the receiver to drop the audio signal, it's still recording in the transmitter. So in post-production, you can take that audio that's recorded on the transmitter and sync it up to your video clips and you still have great audio. In addition to that, the audio that's recorded on the transmitter is 32-bit float wide dynamic range audio. Now, we've covered that in a lot of other videos, but in essence, the short version is, is that if you set your gain incorrectly, your input level incorrectly on the transmitter, and you're just doing spoken word audio, generally you'll be able to recover that audio in post-production. Normally on, on a wireless microphone system, if you set the input level too high and it goes above zero dB, it will clip and it will sound very, very distorted and it will be unrecoverable. In this case, with a 32-bit float wide dynamic range recording, you can usually go into your digital audio workstation or even your video editing app and pull those levels down so they're no longer clipped and distorted. The next big feature is the time code capabilities of the Wireless Pro. Now, the receiver has in it what is called a temperature compensated crystal oscillator. That's a fancy name that refers to a very, very accurate clock. In fact, this clock is so accurate that over the course of 24 hours, with its specification of 0.5 ppm, it's an accuracy specification, it should still be in sync down to the individual frame. So it counts up minutes, hours, minutes, seconds, frames, it'll still be frame accurate after 24 hours. So it's, an, it's a highly accurate clock, regardless of the temperature at which you're recording for the most part. 
And what it does is it actually sends the time periodically to the transmitters as well. So they also, when you start recording on these, it imprints that start time into the recorded file. What that does is in post-production, it makes it so that if you also send the time code from the receiver into the camera, it makes it much easier to sync up these recordings from the transmitter to the video clips. And the way it works on the receiver is that you can send audio on the left channel and time code on the right channel, or you can send just time code if you prefer to do it that way. But it gives you a variety of different options of how to get that time code into your camera. Now, if you're recording with the time code going into your microphone and put on your camera, you will have to convert that video clip in post so that it recognizes, so that your video editing application recognizes that time code as actual time code. It has to actually do a conversion. You can do that in DaVinci Resolve. You can do that in another app called Tentacle Sync Studio. Avid Media Composer also has the ability to make that conversion. Those are the main apps of which I'm aware that can do that. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of how time code works with this particular system. Now, there are some limitations. It's not a full-blown time code generator in terms of being able to uh, receive jam time code from another device to the receiver. It doesn't do that, at least not yet at the time of the review. The It will allow you to jam other time code devices from the receiver. So for example, if you have one of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, you could jam sync those. The reality is though, if you don't leave it connected to that camera, the camera's gonna drift actually quite quickly in my experience. I have both, the, I have the 4K and now I have the 6K pocket camera and those tend to drift quite quickly. So it'll get you in the ballpark if you don't leave it connected, but if you do leave it connected and feed time code the entire time, then you should be good to go for sync. Another change on the Wireless Pro is that you can now make most of the changes on the receiver itself. Of course, you can still connect it via USB to a computer or a phone or mobile phone and make changes on the Rode Central app. And in fact, it's a little bit easier. Actually, it's quite a bit easier, to be honest. It's a pain to have to connect it to a device to be able to make those updates, but it actually is a much easier app to use. I found that changing the settings with the buttons was a little bit... It's like you have to study the manual to make it work. <laughs> it works. Uh, wasn't the most intuitive to me personally. It is possible on the receiver, which is an upgrade from the wireless go to. Now, if you're not using the 3.5 millimeter output on the receiver, say you're sending audio via USB to a phone or a tablet, you can use that 3.5 millimeter output on the receiver to monitor with headphones. So that's a nice feature if you're using a mobile device. One other option is that you can record a safety channel. That is to say, you can make a, the recording from one of your transmitters at a lower level so that if things get louder than anticipated, they will not clip. So that's another option if you prefer to work that way. Now, this is called the Wireless Pro, but I will say it is transmitting via the 2.4 gigahertz band. That's an unlicensed band, meaning that you don't have to have a license to send radio signals within that band. It's the same frequency that's used by Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And it's a frequency that's pretty saturated in some places. Like if you go to a stadium where there was a game or a concert, there's probably so much 2.4 gigahertz wireless activity there that the system may struggle. And I think Rode's answer to that is that you can record in the transmitter. So if you do drop the signal, it's not a big deal. You can always sync it in post from the recording made on the transmitter. But um, it's important to, to keep that in mind. Now, how far can you transmit with these? Rode says up to 260 meters. Here's my experience. With 2.4 gigahertz, it does pretty well indoors if you don't have a ton of Wi-Fi around, other Wi-Fi. And that's going to be most environments that it's not going to be a huge problem. Even in office environments, I haven't generally found it to be a problem. It is potentially a problem, like I said, if you go somewhere where there's a ton of Wi-Fi activity, like a, where there's a lot of people, tons of people, convention show floors, stadiums for concerts or sporting events, that's where it's going to struggle a little bit. So just keep that in mind. What I found indoors in our home here is that I could transmit pretty well. So I started in this room. I walked out the door to the opposite end of the house. And it's not a huge house, but it's probably, I would say... 12 meters to the other end of the house, up a flight of stairs, through another door. And once I got through that second door and up on the next floor, the signal cut out. But as soon as I started walking back this way on the second floor towards this room on the next floor up, it picked up the signal again. 
So that's an example of the kind of things that you may run into challenges with if you're doing something. And, you know, most of us don't record that way, so it's not probably going to be an issue, but it is important to understand the limitations of your system. And so that's what I found. Now, outdoors, the story is a little bit different. If you're outdoors in the wide open, no walls nearby or anything like that, 2.4 gigahertz systems tend to not transmit very far at all, especially if you're wearing the transmitter on the back of your, say, on the back of your pants, on the, the waistband or the belt, and you're facing the camera so that the transmitter is no longer in direct line of sight to the receiver. That's when it seems to struggle the most. And we got somewhere around 15 meters. And then beyond that, it was really spotty. Now, if it's in direct line of sight, even outdoors like that, we were able to get up to 100 meters and get a pretty good solid connection. So if you are going to be working outdoors, I would recommend that you put the transmitter on the front of the person facing the camera so that there are no obstructions there and you have a better chance of holding on to the signal. We like to do a very unscientific test. <laughs> uh, I call it a practical noise floor test. And what I do is I come into my very quiet room, turn off all of the fans, all the air conditioning and anything else that can make noise. We have these sound panels here to uh, broadband bass traps, uh, whatever you want to call them. It's an acoustically treated room and we record some dialogue and then leave some silence as well. We bring that entire audio clip into our digital audio workstation and measure the levels of the dialogue. We boost those up to minus 23 LUFS, which is kind of a standard level that is required for broadcast television in many parts of the world. And then we measure that silent portion. And what we found in this case is that this came in with the included lavalier 2 microphone. The noise floor came in at minus 65 dB RMS max. And that's quite good. It is not horrible, but you can hear. There is some hiss there if you really boost up the levels a lot, a lot beyond that. But I usually aim to have that below minus 60 dB RMS max. And if you can do that, generally it's going to sound pretty clean. So... In short, if you didn't understand what any of that means, you're going to be fine. Now, Rode is sort of building out a really pretty rich ecosystem of audio devices, and this system can also transmit to a Rodecaster Pro 2. So if you're doing a live stream or a podcast, you can transmit from the transmitter directly to the Rodecaster Pro 2. You don't even need a receiver. Kind of nice feature. It can also do the same thing with the Duo, the Rodecaster Duo, or the Streamer X, which is a basically a live stream audio video interface. So pretty nice. Now, this is a digital wireless microphone system. And whenever you have a digital system, there is going to be some latency, some amount of time between when your audio is captured through the microphone and brought into the transmitter, digitized, and then transmitted to the receiver, taken from digital back to analog, and then fed to the camera. That takes some time. And in this case, it's 6.3 milliseconds that it takes. So if you're recording with wired microphones into your, uh, a wired microphone into your camera plus this system, they may be just a little bit out of sync. Not something that most people will notice, but if you just be aware of that, that there is a little tiny bit of latency. I don't see it as a problem, but just so that you're aware. The kit comes with a two-year warranty if you register it with Rode after you purchase it, and the pricing is $399 for the entire kit at the time of this review. Now, no product is perfect. Let me talk about a few things that occur to me in regards to this product. Number one, it has inbuilt non-user replaceable batteries. I will not stop saying this. Rode, I love you. I love your products. I would implore you to have a battery replacement program or something to address that. There are going to be way too many of these that end up in landfills, and that's not a good thing. Second, the lavalier clips that come with it to hold the lavalier and to attach it to clothing are, they're a little bit fiddly, to be honest, and they don't hold the microphone very firmly. I, there have been multiple occasions, especially when I put the, the fur cover on when I was working outside, the lavalier microphone just popped right out of the clip and just sort of ended up dangling there. I'd love to see that design for the clip improved in some fashion so that it doesn't run the risk of falling off like that. As I mentioned before, some of the buttons, combinations, and things are, that you'd use to set the settings on the receiver are not super intuitive. I found it a little frustrating, to be honest, but um, if you read the manual and you do your homework, you'll be able to figure it out. It's not difficult, but it's not something that I just remembered. I have a lot of other devices that I have to remember how they work. I don't need another device where I have to remember a bunch of stuff like 
button combinations I need to press to make adjustments. I'd love to see that simplified in some fashion. For example, as a comparison, the DJI mic system has a touch screen, which makes, I think, setting those settings a lot simpler. And then finally, just a note, I wouldn't say this is so much of a con, but just to be very clear about how timecode works on this system, is that you can send timecode one of two ways, out of the 3.5 millimeter output on the receiver or via USB on the receiver. If you're using the 3.5 millimeter output, it's an, out, it's an output, it's not an input. So you cannot take another timecode generator and then attach the receiver from the Wireless Pro to that and have the Wireless Pro read timecode from that other timecode generator. So just so that you're aware, for those of you that have a timecode workflow, it's not possible, at least at the time of this review, to jam the Wireless Pro receiver to another timecode device. It just works one way. In other words, you can only get timecode out of the Wireless Pro receiver. Most common questions I think we're going to hear are, how does this compare to two other systems? Number one, the Rode Wireless Go. And I would say the two main things that stand out to me is that you can record on the Pro in 32-bit float, whereas the Wireless Go 2 only recorded in 24-bit. Now, I know some people are going to say, no, I can actually export in 32-bit float. You actually can, but it's still a 24-bit recording, just so that you're aware, on the Wireless Go 2. On the Pro, it's an actual 32-bit float recording. So that will help you bring those level down, levels down in post if you need to, to address any clipping or distortion issues if you set the gain inappropriately. Works, I would say with spoken word audio, it's going to work 99% of the time. With sound effects recording, if they're really, really loud, you can still clip even with 32-bit flows. So just be aware of that. Now, what about compared to the DJI mic, another very popular kind of consumer, prosumer wireless microphone system, very similar to the Wireless Pro and the Wireless Go 2. And I would say that, again, the benefits of the Wireless Pro are 32-bit float recording in the transmitter and that the receiver has a timecode clock. So that's the same benefits that the Wireless Pro has over the Wireless Go 2 and the DJI mic. However, I would say, as we mentioned before, that I do really like on the DJI mic that you can change the settings using a touch screen on the receiver, which is really, really nice. Really like that. I will also say, though, that the screen on the Wireless Pro, I didn't mention this earlier, and I should call this out. The screen on the Wireless Pro is quite good. It's bigger than on the Wireless Go. It's a little easier to see what's going on. I like it. They did a nice job there. So overall, my take on this system and my recommendation is Pro is maybe a little overstated. You're not going to see this on big budget movie sets or on <laughs> in cases like that, but you will see some pros using them. I think you're going to see wedding videographers who are professionals use something like this. You're going to see event videographers using them. I think you're going to see some mobile phone news kind of setups using things like this. Solo corporate video shooters, I think, would find this system pretty useful. So there's definitely a place for it. The 32-bit float is a really nice feature. So if you are a solo operator, you got a hundred other things you got to pay attention to and you happen to set the input level incorrectly, you can have a fighting chance of being able to recover that in post with the recordings on the transmitter, which is super nice. And if you drop the wireless signal for whatever reason, you have that backup here on the transmitter. So that's a nice feature as well. Now, it is a 2.4 gigahertz system. From my point of view, that's what makes it not so pro. And if you push the limits a lot, like if, for example, if you're a wedding videographer, and you work outdoors at the weddings a lot, which is not unusual. If there's a fair distance between your receiver and the transmitters, there's a good chance you're going to drop it. Fortunately, Rode has an answer for that with the Wireless Pro. It has time code, and it has recordings that are made on the transmitter. So that can definitely work in those circumstances. It comes with two pretty good quality lavalier microphones. In fact, I would say that this lavalier microphone, the Rode Lavalier 2, that it, and it comes with two of them, it's pretty good. I would say quality-wise, the cable is, is super thin, but super durable, feels like. It has, I believe, Kevlar in it to reinforce it, and it's pretty easy to hide. Again, the value that you get with a kit that comes with two transmitters, a dual-channel receiver, two lavalier microphones, all the accessories and cables that you need to hook them up and protect the microphone from wind, $399 seems like a really fair price to me. So I think Rode's done a pretty good job on there. Now, 
if you do work outdoors a lot and you don't want to have, you know, kind of run into the hassle of having to sync a separate recording to the video and post, then maybe this is not the system for you. I think if you're going to do a lot of stuff where you're going to be working through barriers, that's where a UHF system may make a little bit more sense. And there's some good ones. We, in fact, we reviewed one fairly recently, and that is the Sony UWPD is one system as an example of that, where we definitely got farther distance transmission on the Sony system versus this when we were outdoors with no walls nearby. So overall, the Rode Wireless Pro is a nice upgrade over the Wireless Go 2, and I think it's probably a winner relative to the DJI mic on most things, and I can definitely recommend it. If you, based on everything we've said before, the cons don't really kind of cut into the type of work that you're doing. They don't create any problems for the type of work you're doing, but overall, Rode, pretty good job. Oh, there's one other thing. This is really shiny, like if you get it right in the light, look at that. I'd love to see something that's not quite so shiny. You may need to put some gaff tape over that. In any case, get out there and make some great sound. Talk to you again soon.